Well, thought I'd give you a tour of the garden. As you can tell, not real good at weeding, especially in the paths. But we've been working at it a little bit at a time. Had a wet year here in Maine. The neighbor's Great Dane came up here to visit. And that's Newt. He's named after Newton Brook, which runs down the valley here in the bottom of the hill. Our corn looks like it'll be knee high. So I already knee high to him. And a uh, bunch of peas are doing good. Our strawberries are just about gone by. There's a few more left. Let's see if I can find a red one here. There's a red one, but I don't know if I can find it on the zoom. There it is. Those are good. Ever bearing, but they're not ever bearing. They just go for two or three weeks, but that's about a three-year-old patch. You can see we're spreading it out on the end there. Got some Kennebec potatoes out on either side of the grapevines. We got some grapes growing. So those are doing good. And the rhubarb buried a, an old rusty axe that we dug up out of here. There's some blueberries out there. We got ten wild blueberry bushes, which I got a fence because my guinea hens that we got to control ticks love blueberry blossoms and they ate all the blossoms off the blueberry bushes even the big wild blueberry patch we got over there they ate every blossom we got so and we got some potatoes on that back row so my grandson wanted chocolate tomatoes so the girl at the greenhouse sold me some black prints tomatoes they come out real dark colored and we got the romas because we like them and some cabbage Carrots, a row of red potatoes over there. Uh, wild tomatoes coming up there from seeds that were left from last year. And some lettuce coming up. Broccoli I planted twice and hasn't done anything. Kale I haven't had much luck with that. Carrots, so so. I got some peppers out there. Squash is doing good. Got acorn squash and uh, summer squash. And out there in the blueberry patch, I've got two hills of pumpkins and three hills of winter squash. The pumpkins are doing okay, but the winter squash ain't doing too good. So, I came up here to get my digging tool. Because the rain stopped for a little while, and I was watching, I think it's Dale, up in Madison, Maine, their channel. He was out digging relics and stealth diggers in New Hampshire. It's been raining, so I've been watching you guys' video all morning. It's Stealth Diggers, he's been doing the foundations. And Dave there, Relic Hunt in Scotland. I know you guys, the few that watch my videos, all subscribe to him. He's got one of these that he's been going on the beach with. and we uh, One of the first videos I did here. Yeah, just stay right there, you'll be alright. One of the first videos I did was on the foundations when we moved in down here. This was the old county road, and we've got quite a few old foundations and rock walls all up and down through here. It goes all the way up over the mountain here, the, the rock walls, I mean uh, the, the county road. So, we've been poking around the foundations and I've been doing research on the different houses. And pretty interesting, really, once you get into it, you know. The house that we had when we first moved here, this uh, flower bed that we got now, there was an old outhouse here, or what was an outhouse to these two buildings which were built in the 40s. And I had assumed that that was one of the original houses that were on this map from 1790 to 1840 this one right here that says uh, Andrew Marsh and David Marsh well Andrew Marsh that's where I'm standing right now and then the county road is there so David Marsh who lived across the street that was his son and Andrew Marsh married a park and some of the parks live down the bottom of the hill here well this uh, 
Harvey Park house. We found an 1861 or an 1881 Indian head penny there the other day and a nice button. And I haven't found too much around our house, but after looking at it, let me set this down for a sec. I found a, a later map from 1880. <clears throat> See now, now my house is owned by a stone. And the one across is a different marsh, a C marsh, and the A marsh is up here. And uh, this marsh down here. This is a, I found that 1805 drape bust, and my friend Dan just found an 1806 lodge scent down there by the barn. The house is still there. And uh, this foundation, there's actually two cellar holes down here, and then a couple other block foundations so we found a uh, we never found any real coins around here till the other day like I said I found that 1881 Indian head down here at the schoolhouse which is where Dan lives I found the two I found an 1864 Indian head and two large cents in 1851 and in 1852 and uh, found a couple buttons up here and some buttons down around this place but I never found any buttons or old coins other than maybe six or seven in uh, wheat cents you know from the 40s around our place then in uh, this is in 57 I think or 56 this shows our where I am right now and there's three houses here but the next year there's only two so I'm thinking there was an old house out here in the field and then they built the two new camps here in the 40s and then sometime after the 50s they tore down the one that used to be attached to this because when we burnt this down it was full of full of square nails I went through with a magnet filled like a five gallon pail with square nails from this place and this was the outhouse so I'm guessing the, the other house might have been out here and we had these rocks here and so I'm guessing that that might have been the foundation it has kind of a square shape to it but I'm not really convinced of it yet that this is where the other house was because they don't look like foundation rocks there is a lot of iron around here, but it, it kind of goes in a line right across here. <coughs> and then there's other rocks that, that go up this way. So it made me think that this might have been a, a foundation, but it's hard telling. There's a lot of iron down here by the, where the dog is in there eating the chicken food. I throw all the scraps in for the baby chickens we got, and the dog goes in under the fence. But anyway, <clears throat> haven't found no bottle dumps. We found one dump way on the other side of the field on the edge of the brook. But the oldest bottle we found was last week, and that was a 1910 cork top bottle. And the wife found this standing up next to it, a headboard or a footboard to a bed. So she had to take that home, put it in her flower bed. But we're going to take a ride down the road and I'll give you the tour of the cellar holes and the foundations. And uh, I think I'm going to do like a little video series on it and document it for my own purposes and then for the those of you who enjoy watching these things. Sonny, get out of the chicken food. Come on, you found your way in there, find your way out. Oh, don't go in the coop. The rock walls that line the, the old county road. Goes up to that corner and then around the corner. On the left is our place we're renting and the neighbor's place. 
you know, both of those places were on the map. Uh, Andrew Marsh lived in my place there. David was his son. Dave, his son David had 13 kids. So, the rock walls on this side of the road, down here pretty low. I walked along here the other day. There's another little place down there we'll go down after. But all of this was fields. Uh, see an aerial photo from 1943 and both sides of the road here was all fields all the way down through here out maybe a quarter of a mile you know so here's one bar away in the road so this is probably like a an entryway up here to the, the fields or one of the foundations there's two cellar holes and two uh, Two found well, three, yeah, two cell holes, two foundations. And we'll show you. This is the first one next to the road here, and a lot of farm implements, I think, in this one. So I'm guessing this was going to be the barn because <coughs> it's pretty big. It's got to be well, probably 40 feet long and 24, 25 feet wide, maybe 30 feet wide. So. It's got a little raised section in the back with another little wall, knee wall in the back. So it would have been like a crawl space there. And uh, that wall's probably four feet high. You can see the frame of an old wagon there, maybe. And found a bunch of wagon wheels. All right, so that would have been accessible by the road here. And the other cellar hole is just over the other side here. So let's go around. Maybe a little tour. Try to stay out of the real wet stuff. I found too much around here. And somebody didn't fill their hole there. Might have been me. Might still be something down there big. Found a watch part of a clock here. There's a road goes out through there, but you can't really tell which was the original road because of course they've logged in here. But one of these was probably the original road in between the the farm here. Or the, the barn. And then right back here, we've got a big granite block here, and some more, some more relics from uh, stagecoaches or something maybe. And then there's the wagon wheels. So a lot of interesting stuff, but we haven't found any bottle dumps or anything. But we haven't really spent a lot of time down here come down here once in a while spend an hour now we never spend more than an hour or so because my hip gives out after a little while but, a piece of tin can this is a huge huge place this is probably got to be 40 feet now maybe not 40 but yeah maybe 40 by 50 foot hole I guess and that's a good sized place there and then it's got a little ramp that comes up through here a little entryway goes out there there's the, the barn the road that goes into this so maybe that's where they had the oxen or something and the cellar hole <clears throat> it's over here on the other side of the wall. I'm not going to walk through the main road because it's all grown up with stuff. So we'll go through here. We come down here because it's nice and cool on a hot day and dry on a wet day. But this is the, the big cellar hole, we'll call it. So I'm going to assume this was the main house. 
and uh, I haven't gone down in there to poke around or anything. You see they've been dumping trash in there and brush and stuff over the years. But it's a pretty deep cellar hole. I'd say it was like an 8 or 10 foot cellar, you know, so. Uh, one of the guys that owned this in 1880 also owned the general store and the post office up on the other part of the village. Now, we started doing some detecting down here. We never found any coins, a lot of flat metal, uh, tobacco tins and stuff like that. Did find a couple axe heads, a couple of bricks. And we're down here the other day in the heat and I decided to rake off an area, you know. And say, alright, I'm just going to go and <coughs> cover this area with a little 5x8 coil and the... Uh, using the audio, iron audio and the discrimination up on 35 and I just go real slow until I got anything over a 35 or anything 40 and above I'd dig and dug a lot of flat pieces of the iron uh, got right there by the tree I got two harmonica reeds and down here leaves covered them up here but got a lot of uh, a lot of flat pieces of iron and two pieces of harmonica reed. And there's another one down here somewhere. <coughs> a little knife, part of a spoon, some piece of metal, a couple pieces of glass, an old shotgun shell, some pottery. Really thick glass. Top of a bottle. This is kind of neat. It was a hinge, which is really nice. So that was a good find. And I had two pieces of harmonica reed here. And I don't remember taking the other one up the house. So that's kind of a mystery. So the wife, her channel's looking for ghosts. She's the psychic. She likes that ghost hunting. So maybe Mr. Marsh or Mr. Holman decided he wanted that harmonica reed back and took one of them. So I don't remember taking one up the house, but I very well could have. But anyway, this is one of the spots we're going to try. And there's another small cellar hole over on the other side here. But I'm not going to walk through that stuff. So I'm going to backtrack around and I'll catch up to you when I get over there with some fairly dry feet. Well, rain is really coming down now. But I made it down here. This is like a little road that comes in off the highway. The county road there yeah. goes out through here and then got a depression in here with another cellar hole in the back. I found a button right here. Beautiful, looked like it had just been dropped. It says uh, has a name on the back. I can't think of it right now, but I'll put up a picture of it right about here, brother. We haven't found any wells or, like I say, bottle dumps. You'd find cans and stuff like that. We haven't found any yet. A bunch of rocks here piled up. <coughs> Some of the chunks of iron we've been digging up here. And, uh, more piled up there. But this is a pretty small foundation, probably oh, 10 feet, 12 feet by 12 by 20 maybe. So there's an old tin pan down there, a pot of one.
but I found two nice flat buttons over on the little trail that goes parallel to the back here and I found an 1881 Indian head <coughs> the last time we were down here that was right over there I didn't find any others. Dan found another button down there. Rain's really coming down. I got one more place across the road I want to show you. And then we'll let you go until next time. I'm getting pretty wet. Alright, well that was the where the barn and everything was over there. And there's a road that goes down through here. And then uh, that small foundation that I just showed you there. And it goes back down here, and then there's another road that goes over that way. And then there's this road that comes down through here. And uh, dug a, a nice buckle in here last year. And we've hunted up and down through the, the rock wall here, never found too much. And then over here, the size of that birch, that's been there for a long time more snap iron that we dug up <coughs> and got this loading ramp is what I'd call it and right on part of the wall then it looked up above there found an axe head up there found a few axe heads about three or four around here um, this looked like a loading ramp this is the only sign of a dump that I could find it's got some cans, but none of it really looks old, you know, it's uh, fairly modern stuff. And they're all the same type of cans, so, like brake fluid or something. But I'm going to scratch around and see if I can't find some re remnants of an old dump around. Maybe walk up along the road here a little bit. But I'm going to make a series of videos of trying these different places. So this is kind of an intro to that because I'm sure ain't going to do much today the way the rain's coming down. So when the weather gets nice, we'll poke around and try to make a series of videos. <laughs> 